Welcome to Aesthetically Speaking with Felicia Lisa Middleton. Welcome back to Aesthetically Speaking, where we are building conversations about Philadelphia's locations. This season, we are talking about finding and building your tasty spaces within the city of Philadelphia and beyond. And today we have Jackie Ball again, and we are so happy to have you back again in season two. We had you here for season one talking about gentrification, and I'm excited to have you back again to talk about helping individuals find the proper space for their restaurants. Um, just before we begin, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do. So thanks for having me, first of all, and I am Jackie Ball. I'm a, a realtor for Long & Foster. I'm with the Art Hurling team, which is in Bluebell. Um, however, I work throughout the Philadelphia area in Montgomery County, and I essentially work to find the appropriate residential and commercial space for my clients. And that includes those tasty spaces. <laughs> love it. I love it. And I love the fact that you said finding the appropriate one. Because that's very important. It's one of the things that um, I try to talk with people about. People may come to me sometimes and they say they want to open a restaurant, but they don't know where to open it. And I always tell people, call a realtor. I mean, there, there's a reason why we have professionals around. Right. You guys are skilled in not only how to purchase the right facility, but where to find the right ones for what the person wants to do. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is how do, does a person begin? If I'm looking into, um, I want to start a restaurant, I want to open a restaurant. I, I, I have funding, I'm a chef, and I want to have a restaurant, but I, I have maybe an idea of where I want it. What, what do I do when I come to you? So when you come to me, first you need to educated on um, number one zoning that's important <laughs> love it love it love it I love you I'm sorry I have to say it <laughs> I have to say it I can I can <laughs> I love you <laughs> it's important it and, so and oftentimes important. you have folks who have a passion who have the skill set to to manage and and have a res restaurant or a tasty space but they're not familiar or educated on zoning so you have to educate them about zoning the other thing with peace is financing um, and then getting down to what's your budget. Okay. Uh, besides your budget, the location. What type of um, market do you want to draw to your space? Mm -hmm. And if it's one where you want those folks who want a quick bite to eat, then you've got to be in that area where family, it's not family oriented and everyone's looking to do sit down and cook their own dinner at night. You want to have an area where they're looking for a quick bite to eat, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it's an area where you want to have the full family dinner, maybe something that poses a robust family dinner, then you've got to make sure. So what it is that you serve goes hand in hand in where you service. I love it. So. I love it. That, that, and and I'm, I'm, I have to say it again. I'm so glad you just said that about zoning. And, and one of the reasons that I'm, we may have talked about this before is so many people, and I, they say it to me all the time, I'm, I, I, I'm looking to open up a restaurant in this space, and I said, they've all, unfortunately, at this point, a lot of times they've already rented the space, and I, and I say, okay, well, we want to just check the zoning, because as soon as you call me up, people sometimes don't even know it, but I'm on the computer looking up the zoning while you're telling me where it's located. And they say, well, it's zone commercial, but that's not the only thing. Exactly. You have to go a couple of steps. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in Philadelphia, when you're opening up a restaurant, you have to take it a couple of steps further because not only zoned commercial, you, that, the, the, the fact that a restaurant has to be allowed to open in that commercial space because everything that's zone commercial right. can't be what you want it to be. But also, there's different zoning for takeout, eat-in. And I mean, so they're, 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 they take it to another level in Philadelphia. They, they, they classify the type of food facility that you're going to open up. And, and I have had a couple of people that had restaurants that were um, in spaces that unfortunately were not zoned for takeout and they wanted to have a takeout restaurant. So that's, a, that's very important. Zoning is very important. And now, now you said something else that I think is the key, budget. Budget. Earlier in the, in the season, we talked with someone about financing. How does a person know what to use for their budget? Well, essentially when they come to me, the first budget question is, how much do you 
have and want to spend. Okay. That's the first budget question. It's a realtor that we have. A financial um, lender or financing company is going to have a different budget question than okay. I'm going to have. Makes so sense. My, my budget question for them is going to be, how much are, do you have to spend? And how much cash do you have to spend? And is this all being financed? Those are the budget questions that I, that I pose to my clients. And oftentimes, like you said, they put the cart before the horse. Um, if they're not purchasing outright or if they're not having financing done to purchase, then they've gone and they've leased prior to. Mm -hmm. So budget is important that I need to know how much you want to spend. Okay. They also need to know that in purchasing a commercial space, even a restaurant, there's a certain percentage you need to have to put down on that space. And so oftentimes if they're purchasing, they're not aware of that percentage. That's the other area that I educate them in. If they're leasing, then I need to know what steps have you taken so far. And like you said, oftentimes they've already leased the space. <laughs> and so I've got a back pedal, mm -hmm. right? And deal with the zoning. I've got to deal with the budgeting. And oftentimes I have folks who come to me and again, they have the know-how, but they don't have the funding. Okay. So now the next budget step I take is to find them the appropriate lender for them if they don't have any funding of their own, if they're going to purchase. And then sometimes even with leasing, there may be investors who want to invest in that venture with you. So that's another avenue. So education of a buyer who's going into a tasty space, it's from zoning to budgeting from the realtor's perspective. And then the next thing you want to do is find that space for them once they have the preliminary items lined up. And that, and that makes sense. Um, I, but by the time I get them, hopefully they've talked to you. They've talked to a financial person. And, and that's the whole idea of these shows is to help people understand the process. Because before you come to me, I mean, or maybe even while you're consulting with me, it's good to talk with a realtor. It's, to me, it's very important to talk to a realtor. Because although I know a little bit about real estate, I don't know the level that you know. There's no way I can know. There's no way I can know the market influxes. You know neighborhoods. You know towns. So you would know, you, the, the whole purpose of being in real estate is to understand locations exactly. and, and, and the types of buildings and what they're going for and what they'll yield, that kind of thing. And um, so I, I think it's good. I, I want to stress so much to people when you're opening a tasty space. Talk with a realtor, but also let the realtor educate you. Don't think you're smarter than the realtor because a realtor like Jackie who is educated in zoning is so important. Zoning will stop you from doing anything. Um, and and you, I'm, I'm sure you've dealt with zoning board of adjustment. Um, you know, you don't get the, you deal with somebody who may have gone ahead and signed the lease or may have gone ahead and decided, you know, they want this building no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. Because and sometimes that there's nothing wrong with that right. because you may have a building that's in the perfect location mm -hmm. and it's not zoned, so you have to go through the zoning right. board of adjustment, which is a long process, and you deal with neighborhood input, and then you deal with talking that's to a right. board. It's almost like a court. Mm -hmm. So these are things that if you don't want to end, if you don't mind going through that process, that's one thing. But if you make the wrong decision with zoning, you could end up right. in front of those people, and they're there. You've already purchase the building or you've already gotten yourself in a lease and now you got to deal with people making decisions for you mm -hmm. and I've seen it where people get turned down and they're, they've spent money right. and they're investing and unfortunately they, they, they just get shut down and it's sad it is sad it's, it little, is sad. it's a large amount of money that you put out for a restaurant so you want to make sure that you educate just you know you let people educate you Learn as much as you can. Don't think you're smarter than everybody else because there are people, there are reasons why there's professionals around. And, and we're here to help people. Now, when you're renting, we talked about leasing, renting. Right. What are some tips that you can give people? Lending, lending some people don't even know if they want to um, lend or whether they want to purchase. Right. They may be in a situation where they can do either one. What are some tips you can give people to know which direction to go in? So it depends on how much they have financially um, and they, how much cash they have at hand mm -hmm. for their down payment and so forth. But if they're renting, one of the things they want to look at is negotiations. So that's where I come in. Okay. Because whoever is going to lease the space, right, um, I can negotiate with them. Okay. So let's say the space needs some upgrading. Um, I can negotiate for you them giving you a free one-year 
of rent free. And people don't know that. Because you can upgrade so it. You're going to upgrade it for them. And then you can rent it to me at maybe a little bit higher next year and year two because I've upgraded your space. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the keys or the caveats of having a realtor. Oftentimes, that consumer does not know or that business person does not know that let me negotiate in this because they believe, okay, it's being leased for X number of dollars. This is what I have to pay up front. Not necessarily. Let's mm -hmm. get that realtor involved so we can start the negotiation process before you even offer, make a, a, submit an agreement. Because if they've got a realtor, realtors talk and they're quite transparent with one another. Okay. So I can get on the phone with their realtor and say, look, this is what my client is looking for. This is what they have to offer. This is how they can better your space, right, and improve your space so that let's make a deal this way. And so negotiations are important when it comes to um, leasing. And that, that's very important because in the restaurant process, you deal with so many different um, inspections. You deal with so many different permits and so many different agencies where, I mean, there's sometimes where you're dealing with six or seven different licenses or or permits and that takes a while right some permits you can't get until another one's process so you might be adding a month one to another month one to another month and you don't want to be paying rent during that time exactly. and I always want to have people give yourself six months at least but I like the fact that even a year because you never know if you go through those process there's construction delays I had a restaurant where unfortunately someone got sick and they couldn't close on the um, inspection those kind of things happen and you don't even realize that it may happen and then you're paying you end up to a point where you're paying rent and you're not even open right and you have delays you're paying labor you know that's another thing you stop you're paying labor you're paying rent and the if you give yourself that cushion and you can get your not you give yourself because a lot of times people aren't savvy enough to do that right. but a real estate agent like you exactly. said is um, I think a lot of people don't even realize that they can do that. No, they don't. That's what I was going to say. A lot of um, consumers who are looking to open a business, a tasty space, don't realize, especially in the leasing aspect of it, they feel like, okay, this is what, if, if they're purchasing, they believe that there's the opportunity to negotiate, right? Mm -hmm. But when they're leasing, they don't think that the opportunity lies there. And it, it, it does. And some and people so, want to go ahead and sign a lease and not even thinking about, look. They don't feel like they don't need a room. It, I don't know. And see, when I hear that, I want to, it scares me a little bit because that's telling me you think that, and, and, and I don't know. I don't like to hear that. I know that if you get a good realtor, you get someone that's going to be your partner in what your, your, what your project is. You, to me, how can you say you don't need a realtor when you're, especially in a business transaction, that's almost as bad as saying you don't need a lawyer. <laughs> and, and, and for me, from my perspective, what I tell my, my clients is what I'm here to do is make that business transaction a seamless one, as seamless as possible. Those bumps in the road that you would normally experience, I may experience them, but I'm that buffer between you and exactly. that experience that you're going to have in eventually leasing that property. I'm the buffer. Exactly. I can make it seamless for you. And you can find issues that may, they might not be able to find. And there's a lot of issues that we can run into that we see, you know, in zoning and, and um, some of the, the title issues that might be on exactly. it. You know, you know who to call. You know who to deal with. You know how to. And, and one of the things I used to love, I, I shared when I first went into business, I shared a space with a realtor. This is why I have so much respect for realtors. I love being around them in the professional environment because they educate me. I used to constantly go to the real realtor that I shared a space with and ask her, can you look up this building for me? You know, I need some information about this building. Realtors have access to information that we, as architects, as engineers, construction workers, you don't have access to that. And, and um, I'll give you an example. I was in a space recently and um, the realtor had access to the space. The realtor allowed the contractor to get into the space, but the potential renters couldn't even get in. And so the contractor can look at the space and they can tell them information that they might not know. So that's exactly. And, and the thing is, like you said, we have access. The key is we have immediate access. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You have, because that was, that's a good point. Because they said the realtor was able to give me access and the contractor but they said we can't go in there. We can't. We can go in, but we can't have the key. We can't have the code. But you can. And they were a little bothered by it. But this is this is where you know there's a reason why because 
that you, if you had a realtor and you're letting the realtor take care of this for you, then you can go ahead and have access. They didn't have a realtor. It was the, it was the owner's realtor. You have to have your own representative. Right. <laughs> and let me tell you what often happens is, because you mentioned that the owner's realtor will sometimes, and this is what those who are looking to lease properties um, for tasty spaces, they get talked into using the owner's realtor, which is not good. Because, again, that dual representation, it means that now I've got to kind of divide myself and have your best interest at heart, have your, and that's difficult to do. I didn't even know that that could happen until I was stuck in the middle of a dispute. A dual agency exists. And, it, and it, I said, oh my God, isn't that a conflict of interest? And the realtor was like, no, actually, I represent the buyer and the seller. And, and I was stuck in the middle of it because it was some issues with you know, construction and some things we had to do with permits. And, and, and I, I was flabbergasted that you can actually have a representative represent the owner and the buyer. <laughs> Exactly. And, and that, like you said, that's an uneducated person getting themselves into something that they didn't even realize. And, and just call up a realtor, you know, call them up, tell them what you want to do and discuss it with them to see if maybe this is the right person for you. Now, what, was some, what would be some advice you would give a person who's looking for, they, they're willing to get a realtor, so they're looking for a realtor. What are, some, what are some, some things you would offer a person as a realtor if they're trying to find a tasty space? that might be above and beyond what a typical realtor would offer? I would say, and this is what I say to all of my clients, have a plan A, B, and C. So I help them, unlike other realtors, I go a step beyond and I help them develop that plan A, B, and C. Because plan A may cause you to have a bump in the road. Okay. Plan B may have a half a bump in the road. And plan C can get you smooth sailing. So what I offer outside of what everyday realtors offer is I help you with the planning. Mm -hmm. um, I am the planner. It's not just finding the, the place that you're looking for or the space that you're looking for. You come to me with your ideas, your plan, and you tell me what you're looking for. Now, if in fact that area you're looking for and the market says something different and it's not a good place for you, what's your plan B and what's your plan C? And I help develop that. And, that, and that's a good, that's a key. Plan. Planning is key. I'm, I'm, I'm always posting planning process. Planning, we, you know, we talked in another episode about the process of, of uh, planning your tasty space but the biggest key to me is planning before you even get to the process because if you don't have a plan you can you can skip the process or you can mess up as you're going through the process and um, as far as realtors are concerned I love working along with realtors on projects because to me if you have a good realtor and they're willing to work along with the designer and the construction team we're all in it together. Mm -hmm. I'd even like to work with you. Like if somebody's opening a restaurant and they want their realtor from the beginning before they even start looking, I would love to be along with that team because I can help the realtor say, look, that there's some structural issues right there. Or there's some things that you might not want to um, choose in that space because it's going to be hard construction-wise right. to convert it to what they want. So I think it's very important. Get your team together when you plan. Get your construction team, get your, um, your, your real estate agent together, and get your designer along with it. Don't try to hide one thing from another person because it's very important that we all communicate with each other. And even when we go through the Zoning Board of Adjustment, I love talking with people's lawyers mm -hmm. because the lawyers give you information on there's some issues going on that they might know that you don't know about because the, sometimes the, the client doesn't know everything. You know, they don't always know the neighborhood. They don't know, always know the, 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 um, the issues that are going on around the neighborhood. So real estate attorneys, real estate agents, they know these things. And it's good when we are all together and we work as a team right. to help you get your ultimate goal fulfilled. Because ultimately, we want to try to save you money so you won't have these hiccups in a row. Exactly. <laughs> and so that's key, too. So you, you ask, what else do I bring to the table um, outside of the standard realtor? is the planning but resources access to resources i mean just sitting here with you right now right so mm -hmm. you're a resource if i had someone who came to me and said look i've got the right food builder for you so having resources as a realtor is key and that's what i bring to the table as well from um contractors to the architectural piece all of that is important that you bring that to the table and i bring that to the table as a realtor and i think that I'm, that's why one of the reasons why we kind of vibe very we met at a networking event 
but you're the kind of realtor that I like being around because I like being with realtors that want to want to form that team relationship. We may not always have, you know, different clients that we can bring together, but right. as, when we see the opportunity, then we're like, hello, you know, I need to have somebody who might be able to help you. You might be able to help. Or, you know, and th these things always, we're, we are here not only to be in business, but we're also, our end goal is to make sure our clients have the best service right. and have the best people give them the best service. So that's why we form these teams together. Um, I'm very happy that you came on second time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exciting it's that, that, you know, exciting. that we talk about different things. And, and I always learn, I learned some things just having you on this time. And I'll, I'm definitely going to have you give me some input for in a project that I'm working on because you're, you're very knowledgeable. And I love some of the points that you brought out. Um, thank you for being here and helping people plan their tasty space. Um, this is this is our season that we're going to launch helping businesses that are opening restaurants and food facilities go to another level and have it planned very efficiently. So I thank you very much. Thank you for having me and I've got a tasty space that I actually need to consult with you about. So <laughs> well, this is awesome. <laughs> this is it's going to be in the making. It'll be a reality show. <laughs> Let's not discount that. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>